So I've got a new destination on this trip. I'm going to Lake Ballard. Well, I have to continue riding after Lake Ballard to get back to civilization and get home, but Lake Ballard's about 700 kilometers from here. So to get there, I have to cross the wheat belt uh, on fairly familiar roads, which I've done before over the years. And when I get to the eastern edge of the wheat belt, a bullfinch, I take a new dirt road, which leads me up eventually up to Lake Ballard. So the 340 kilometer dirt section will obviously be the big challenge uh, on this ride. So I come out of the dirt road immenses on the other side, on the eastern side of Lake Ballard and then continue north through the gold fields up to Leinster and then from Leinster turn left and go west to the coast uh, through Sandstone and Mika Thara. so probably somewhere around Mika Thara is where I will end the ride. Yeah, it's lunchtime now. I'll have a little break. Steady climb up into the hills. Chittering road. This is going down to uh, tonight's camp. So here we are at the Oval at Little Chittering. This will be the most verdant campsite on the whole trip. I'll put money on that now. Good morning, it's day two. Very cold night last night. Just waiting for the sun to come up and warm me up. I slept with all my clothes on. It was freezing. It was about two degrees last night. Oh, I think it could be like this on most of the trip. Bottle me 10 degrees now. So I'm going through this lower Chittering Valley Road, follows the river. Oh, 
fair bit of water going through. Oh boy, I'm not sure if I can ride up this. I'm in the lowest gear now, I haven't got to the steep bit. Still going. <sighs> Rapid elevation gain. <sighs> Looks like I'm not done yet. I'm up to 215 meters. 299. Entering the uh, Julemar National Forest now. 345. <sighs> Hard work. Steep descent into 2J. Morning campers, day three, oh, it was another cold night, oh, icy, so it's heading into 2J town to get some breakfast and today I'm riding to Darwin. It's an undulating ride, seven or eight hundred meters of climbing from what I remember, up and down. Ooh. Yes, after a hard slog from nine o'clock at 2J to one o'clock and um, arrived at Gumaling. Oh well, a nice little stop in Gumaling. And it's uh, two o'clock now, 25 kilometers to Darwin. Good day mates, day four, trying to leave Darren. The weather's not looking good today. It's forecast rain. Completely soaked through. Spent the last 45 minutes riding in heavy rain. Raindrops keep falling on my head But that 
doesn't mean my eyes are too big for my head. Crying's not for me. Oh, I'm never gonna stop the rain by complaining because I'm free. Nothing's worrying me. Great bit of road this bit since I catch them. It's even got a rumble strip down the middle. So tomorrow I'm going to Mucking Budding. Which I think is left here. Follow the Ben Cub inside. Daybreak on day five at training. Uh, another cold night. Waiting for the sun to come up get a little bit of warmth. Good day mates, day six, just leaving Mukin Budin. Today is going to be a make or break day for me. I uh, had a lot of self doubts last night, so I prepared myself for the, the dirt road now up to Lake Ballard. I've got 20 litres of water on the bike. It feels terrible. I woke up at four, couldn't get back to sleep, thinking should I go home? Or should I continue? I hate to uh, fail. I want to see these things through, but if I'm going to get sick, it's just freezing at night in the tent just barely keep warm enough and the tent always in the morning is soaking wet from the dew and the last week there's been no moon so when the moon kicks in it's just going to be like on turbo colder and damper and I've just left Mucking Budding and I'm going to Bladgy Rock today and Really now, it's the hardcore bit of the ride that started. That's why I filled up with 20 litres of water to try and see me through until uh, maybe Wind Darling Mine Site, which is 200k. If uh, there probably be some mine worker I can flag down if I need work water. But I'm not drinking that much water because it's too cold. 
So I'd say about four litres a day. I've got about five days worth of water on the bike. So yeah, make or break. Always feels good in the morning, the sun's up, feel positive. But a lot of self doubts at night. Okay, we will see in the next few days how it turns out. for Balaji Rock. It's a lovely afternoon. It's like it's been 31 and a half degrees on the road. That's a temperature variation. From like three degrees in the morning to over 30. And I reach Balaji Rock. And I even managed to get my table like I had last time I was here. That was good. There's quite a lot of punters around. I wasn't sure there'd be anybody here. But there's probably more here this time than there was the time I was here before.
Good day, mates. Day seven. Just leaving Bladgy Rock. And today is the big day heading into the great unknown. I'll be riding on uh, tarmac for about 40, 50 kilometers. And then I'll get on the dirt road that leads me all the way up to Lake Ballard. 350 or so kilometers of dirt. Well, there's a road train coming and I've seen two so far. They look like they're doing open cast mining. So it could be, from what I remember, they come from uh, north of Bullfinch. That's the way I go, so it must be something. MLG. See, here comes a couple more of the road trains. They're doing a return leg, going back to the mine. This is where the adventure begins. Time to leave civilization. Time to turn left into the outback. see another field on the whole trip. It's all uh, bush from here onwards. Well goodbye fields, goodbye civilization. I've just come into the western woodlands. Gravel time. Good day mates, it's day eight and I'm out in a bush now. I am uh, on the dirt road now, the Bullfinch of Anstone dirt road and uh, Lake Deborah is just over there. You can't hardly see any of the lake because of the trees everywhere. This road is pretty good because it's maintained for the mine site. The road is long, a long, long road with many a winding turn that takes us to who knows where, who knows when, who knows when. But I'm strong, strong, strong enough to care. He ain't heavy, he's my brother. Even the road trains look like miniature in this environment. Well, 
I've had a couple of interesting hours. As usual, I forgot to film, but uh, I met two people. One worked for Remelius Resources, and then the other for the contractor, MLG, that looks after Remelius's mines. So the first one, uh, Remelius Lucy, I'd basically planned with her to get water from her tomorrow. She's gone back to Westonia, but when she come up in the morning, it takes two hours to drive, she's going to give me some water, which is going to be a bit embarrassing because the uh, guy from MLG contractor that I spoke to yesterday, he uh, stopped for me. Looks like he's been looking for me uh, all day um, and he's just given me water. So I'll have to uh, use it up so that tomorrow Lucy doesn't feel that she's done that, all that effort for nothing. But anyway, it's all good. Good morning viewers, day nine today. I'm 80 kilometers in on the dirt road with probably another 240 to go before I get to uh, Lake Ballard. Not the best of moods. Uh, it rained heavily last night, so I was unable to eat anything really. I couldn't cook my meal which is my main meal of the day. It's had to have a tin of tuna and some rice crackers and chocolate bar. Um, so yeah, it's hard going. All right, been going 500 meters. Um, the road, when I first got going, uh, dirt was sticking to my tires, getting fatter and fatter. And picture myself having to push. Well, my progress has been halted because the road rain last night. The road is mucky and sticky, and it basically almost jammed me up. Look at that, all that resting inside the front derailleur, and it always gets caught at the brakes. I'm riding! Yeah, he feels good. Okay, I've just had my lunch here at uh, the junction Windarling Road and the Dirt Road, the Bullfinch Evanstone Road. There's phone signal here. That's the reason I stopped. It's got in touch with my loved ones. And so the up there is the accommodation village for the workers, the mineral resources. And down there to the left is the airport where they fly in and fly out. All right, I've only done 20Ks today. It's been a bit of a up and down day, but it's been good. Started bad, but it's just very good. As I, uh, I met Lucy and she gave me all the water and a couple of cakes and an apple. So it's buoyed my spirits. Well, I just cracked the 500 meter altitude. First time on this trip. Hey, hey. nice one. And I read on the profile of this road, there's a 5% climb gradient, 89 meters. Uh, coming into the hairpin at five kilometers an hour, if that. Uh, it feels even steeper. Have to go for my lowest gear. No choice. Oh, it's very hot now. Okay, just go. Slowly up the hill in my granny gear. Another KOM for me. I might get this one. 
I don't know if anybody else has ever cycled this road. Unlikely. But you never know. Welcome to the Shire of Menzies. So now the road is not maintained by MLG because it's only maintained up to the mine site. So interesting to see how it changes. I think it's changed already. Yeah, as I expected, the road is badly corrugated. How about that for a straight road? take me forever to get down the end of that. That's where those tall trees are. I have to go a lot slower now. It's just too bumpy. Good night here. Very peaceful. kilometers I come to a T-junction where I turn right go east and then I got at least two nights in the bush before I do a night at Lake Ballard 
and then the night after that I'll go to Menzies. So yeah, how many is that? At least four days before I get to Menzies. Oh, on top of the world, I can see for miles. can see back I took the photo back there and I'm looking at this spot from this side Good day mates, morning on day 12, Thursday, 14th of August. So that's the direction I'm headed. Looks like I'm going to lose a bit of altitude in the next few kilometres. That is looking east, somewhere out there is Menzies, and just over 100 kilometres. Yeah, as I was saying, I managed to do between 50 and 70 kilometers a day on the gravel road, which equates to five hours or six hours on the bike. I mean, probably doesn't sound that much, but when you pack away the tent in the morning, eat food, and then you need to stop around between four and five before it gets dark. It's fairly much the whole day, about as much as you can do, and supported. Sun's back. It's good. It was a bit gloomy a minute ago. Lunchtime. Just waiting for the kettle to brew. Change of scenery. Is that a big floodplain? Must be a major creek going through here. Road's been great for about the last 25 kilometres. There's been no corrugations. It's like being on a bitumen road. Sweet as. So I'm coming to the Riverina mine site soon, which is my target for today. And that will just lead me tomorrow to get up to Lake Ballard. Good day, mates. Day 13, and I'm at Riverina gold mine. You can probably just hear the humming of it in the background. So, a rainy start. I think this is the third day out of 13 that I've encountered rain. See look, I've only been riding 40 minutes and it's already getting quite pleasant. Dried out, patches of blue sky. Exciting stuff. Oh, I'm on a tarmac road. <laughs> Unbelievable. Lake Ballard. It's the first tarmac in about eight days. So this is Lake Ballard. It is pretty amazing, isn't it? 
I'm impressed. I think there's about 50 of these uh, figures. There's some really right out on the horizon, almost look like in the water. This is a bloke, I assume. Good day, mate. <laughs> Spectacular, unusual spot. G'day mates, day 14, Saturday, and I've just left the Lake Ballard campground. I'm really happy Lake Ballard really was even beat my expectations. Yes, 53 kilometers from Lake Ballard Campground, Menzies. Here's the main drag. Could be open. Fine old hotel there on the right. General store, store. Not into men's, it's just had some sandwiches and a nice big cup of tea. Leonora, hope to get there tomorrow. So I'll do. About 20 now or so, and then uh, tomorrow hopefully get to Leonora. Mind you, the wind is uh, headwind now, strong from the north, so it's going to be slow and steady this afternoon. So they're allowed 60 meters. The other road was 42 meters. 
this hard shoulder is immaculate it's really like a perfect surface to ride on <laughs> having a great time riding on the goldfields highway friday afternoon it's probably the quietest time i think everyone's knocked off Hey mates, this is the real day 14 and uh, highway's just there, Goldfields Highway. I was waiting for my tea to brew. Wind's very strong, can only do 10 kilometers an hour. On the list today for meteorological events, apart from 50 km an hour headwind, is a thunderstorm. It looks like there's one brewing there. Good day, mates. Day 15. It's time to go to town. I'll be going into Leonora today. Hope to get there by lunchtime. Have a shower, first shower for about nine days and do my shopping tomorrow and just sort of tidy up my stuff. It's all in a mess. Just got to be very careful going out of here because of these thorns everywhere. Before I start riding, I check my tyres. Headwinds, seven kilometers an hour. Better see the old ghost town first. It's now or never. Leonora, finally, three days from Lake Ballard. Let's check out the Gualia historic precinct. Good morning, day 17 and I'm just wobbling my way out of Leonora, fully loaded, just been to the supermarket, got enough food for, to ask me the rest of the trip, oh it's so cold this morning. So I'm headed for Leinster. Made the most of the campsite yesterday. A lovely shower after nine days. Shaved. Changed my clothes. Took the roots out on that tree, on that gum tree. 
Unbelievable. Must be one happy tree to be here right by the creek bed. No wonder it's got so many limbs. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six limbs growing out of it. my target for today 70 kilometers and just over halfway from to Leinster from uh, Leonora so that's good enough just skating around cycling slowly and sussing out a flat spot with uh, no stones Good day viewers, certainly a massive contrast in the weather today on day 17 compared to the last two or three days. It's blue skies and it's warm and I think there's a south easterly today. It's pretty effortless to ride so it's a welcome change take the good with the bad on these type of trips a beautiful winter's day and I'm heading to Leinster where so that Leinster is uh, BHP Nickel and I know they are shutting down because Indonesia's flooded the market with cheap nickel uh, but I think they're still in operation for about another six months and at Leinster there is a uh, BHP mess kitchen where public can go and eat so I'm planning on having my breakfast there tomorrow hopefully it's open it's also a supermarket it's a bit of a like a, a BHP village there got a little shopping precinct, shooting market, post office could almost be taken from uh, suburban Perth that's the mine tailings uh, from the right hand side been riding about 8 kilometres to get around them huge Thunderbox mine So right for me, Leinster, tomorrow I'll be going left, Mount Magnet direction, but I'll be going as far as Sandstone only, and then I'll be going cross country to Mikathara. $30 per night, oh, I'm not paying that. Bush. Thank you very much. I can see lights on inside. It's a good sign. Sushi. Thursdays. Tuesday today. It's like being back in Perth. All right. What shall I buy? What can I carry? I'll get a couple more onions. Shallots. Pickling onions. Well, they're as cheap as they are in Perth. Two ninety nine. Let's get maybe two of them. Maybe nice garlic. Oh Jesus. Twenty seven. Kilo. It's probably the 
doesn't weigh that much. Well, good news and some bad news. Um, you can't get breakfast anymore here since COVID. They stopped. You have to be a BHP worker to get breakfast. And, but then I got my wines. Had to show my driving license again. Dig that out of the bag. And uh, I've uh, fill, filled myself up with uh, water from the caravan park. So I got enough water now um, and wine and food from the grocers to uh, basically see me for the rest of the trip. I get to meet the para. It'll be a short and sweet visit to uh, Benster. But I got what I needed. Good day mates, day 18. Definitely the worst thing about Australian bush is the flies. They are just unrelenting as soon as it warms up a bit. They come out en masse. It's just these small flies. They're not blue bottles, but they're just this sort of small little fellas. They drive you mad. I like to find the warmest spot. That's why there's none on the other side. They're all massed on the top there in the heat. Now they're soaking up the sun on my panniers. Now I'll take the tent down. Okay, let's get this bike on the road. The sandstone's about uh, 155 kilometers. And giving myself two days to get there. Bumpy intersection. So I'm leaving the golf fields highway. <laughs> One thing that surprised me this BHP town, they've got massive potholes. You think of the billions that they spend that they could at least fix the potholes up around town, particularly like the campsite. And just there, that junction's shite. Road train behind and there happens to be a car, car coming along. I have to pull off. This is the Royal Flying Doctor Service emergency airstrip here. Land on the road. Eighty two kilometres done today. I stop at 90 and that will mean tomorrow I will have 65 kilometers to ride into sandstone. Day mates, day 19 and me and the flies go into sandstone today. 55 kilometers. Yep, so I should get there early afternoon to do a few housekeeping things before I hit the dirt road up to Mikafara, 200 kilometer dirt, and then catch the coach back to Perth. The wind's sort of coming from the north today, from that side. So the road trains are gonna blast me when they come towards me.
literally uh, pushed me backwards. Oversized Escort. That's huge, man. That's got the whole road. Even if I'm standing here, I get, we can get hit by it. There's two of them. It's truth, it's been a horrible day. The wind is so strong. Every time a road train comes the other way, I have to stop because I get blown off. Otherwise, if I didn't stop, Jesus, it's been like, I can't even get up to 10 kilometers an hour. I'd say it's kind of the worst day, given those other days. I don't know, it didn't seem to be like as horrible as this. Just got to decide if I've got the energy to go and look at London Bridge before I get to the campsite. Probably will. Good day mates, day 20 and I'm off to Mikathara on um, Gravel Road. Just leaving Sandstone now and the sign says 198 to Mikathara. Okay, it's going to be a lot of headwind in the next few days. So after four kilometers tarmac finishes and I'm on gravel for the next 190 kilometers. Got 20 litres of water with me, bike's well sluggish. Just got to take my time and just settle in and get used to the gravel. No rush, as long as I can do 50 today, at least 60 would be fantastic. See how it goes with the wind and the road. Mikathara 171. First cattle grids since leaving Sandstone. I think that must be, I'm going into the area under Sandstone Station. so much anymore is this bloody headwind straight into it especially when you go across these open bits it lets rip the wind oh. it's supposed to be 35 today and tomorrow is predicted 50 be covered in sand by the time I get to Mika Grit everywhere. Still, it's what it's all about suffering. Next week, I'll be back in my nice house and I can look back on this. Uh, enjoy my comforts when I get home. It's what it's all about, too. Appreciate what you got in life. All the good stuff that a lot of people don't have in this world. Well, the good news is I've done 60 kilometers today, which is 10 more than I need to do. So that puts me slightly ahead on the schedule. You're good. That was over seven hours of riding, and the average is something like nine kilometers an hour. All right. I'm done for the day. Got to try and find a spot. It's all a bit bleak around here.
Good morning YouTube. It's a cold Saturday. Day 21. Just spent the night on the cattle station and now I am making my way out hopefully. I can remember how I got here. Out to the road. I'm trying to find my uh, tire marks. Uh, yeah, I can see them. Today is supposed to be the day of 50 kilometer an hour winds. You can see it is windy. At least no flies. Everything else, but no flies. The wind is so strong from the side. It almost pushed me off a few times. Getting desperate, gotta get off and push for a while. Sheltering behind this tree now because it's starting to rain. 15 kilometers in two hours of riding. It's enough to break a man. Five kilometers an hour. I think that was the low point of the whole trip, that lunch. Had sand, blue in everything. I was gonna have two, two cups of tea. But everything was, after the first cup had grit in it, just gave up. I'm now in the Shire of Mikathara and the roads have kind of changed going like white reflective and they're pretty good now hardly getting any rattling of the panniers which is nice getting smashed by the wind again so I'm heading northwest and the wind is coming straight down this road Good day viewers, it's day 22 today, Sunday, penultimate day and um, I'm up early to watch the sunrise and today it's completely still, a total contrast to yesterday. Get on the road. There's a few uh, thorns here, so the best bet is just to follow my track that I came in on yesterday, trying to avoid new areas. And check the tyres before I start riding as well. Feel the wind on my back. Nice. Got quite a few hitchhikers today. They're going to enjoy it because of the tailwind. They can just float along. Just to travel without a fly net, I think would just drive you insane. 
just can't get over what a contrast to yesterday. I was doing uh, at seven and a half kilometers average yesterday and today I'm doing 14 and just rolling along. big rock ahead in the vast flatness well, it's been a good trip really good hard work I managed to ride every day is good. Didn't, not much good at staying two nights in one spot. Just wanted to get moving, and I felt strong enough uh, to do that. 
there was those uh, several bouts of really nasty wind including the one yesterday could have been the worst but apart from that had a bit of rain not much it's been really good uh, probably covered around about 1400 kilometers all up to total it up when I get home it's been successful this uh, extra bit uh, sandstone to make the Thara dirt road I had it in the, on the back burner I thought I'd probably be too over over it and just go on the main road to um, Mount Magnet but I still had the energy and drive to want to do this bit which I'm really pleased about not that it's been particularly oh god hasn't been particularly uh, scenic but I would never get around to doing it again this was the chance cross it off on this trip so yeah need to get home and start video editing a couple of months and then upload to YouTube and I hope you enjoy watching it as always if you haven't subscribed please be nice more subscribers and also give it a thumbs up and comment Comments are the one thing that I really enjoyed receiving. So do me a favour and send me something. Send me a comment. Be much appreciated. Okay. Until the next one, which I think will be Mount Augustus. Have a good one. Take care. Thanks for watching. 25 kilometers from Inca Farinac, somewhere out there in the glare. See clearly now the dust has gone. Gonna be a bright, bright, some shiny day. Good day mates, heading into Mikafara town. It's my last bush camp of the trip. Tonight I will stay in a caravan park and tomorrow my coach back to Perth. End of the journey, 23 days of riding. Been a good trip, still all in one piece.
Shire office on the left. This is the Great Northern Highway that I'm on now. Next year's ride, Mount Augustus. So what I plan to do is catch the coach as far as Mount Magnet, get acclimatized, so ride up Q and meet the Farah, and then um, I'll go in here on the gravel road and then ride back down to Murchison Settlement and out to Mullawa and catch the coach back from there.